The BCA Radio Theater is pleased to present Three Nails in a Vacant Crypt, an original radio drama by Justin Craig. This story tells about a young man who is struggling with life, but one day in particular would change his life forever. Now be inspired by the message of salvation as we bring you the story of Christ's trial, crucifixion, and resurrection. I wonder why that kid is here. Hello. Hey. Are you okay? What's it to you? You look kind of upset. <sighs> just, just mind your own business and leave me alone. Can I ask your name? Will you get out of here? I just told you to leave me alone. I'm Victor. Fine, it's Garrett. Now would you just get lost? Garrett, do you live somewhere around here? Right here, man. Uh, why do you ask so many questions? So you live at the youth center? Wherever you think of, the, the bridge, the park, the theater, you name it. What, what, hold on, what, what did you call this place? A, a youth center? Yes, a youth center. A place for kids to hang out. Really? What, what are they doing there? Well, fun activities and sit around and talk. What kind of activities? Pool, ping pong, foosball. Show me. Sure, I'll take you in there. My youth pastor is supposed to meet me here in a couple of minutes. Oh, great! I got a couple of Jesus freaks wanting to help me out now. A couple of Jesus freaks, huh? Yeah! Just come in and have a Coke. Sure, whatever. Hello, Pastor Rex. This is Garrett. Hi, Garrett. I'm Pastor Rex, the youth pastor here. Yo, man. Where's home? Um, I left home. What kind of soda do you want? Root beer or Pepsi? Pepsi. Hey, tell me something about yourself, Garrett. Why do people always want to know something about me? My parents don't. Wow, that was a mouthful. You're a preacher, man. Look what your God did to our family. What did he do? Ever since my parents became Christians, they've been trying to shove God down my throat. They don't care who I am. Who are you, Garrett? What do you really like? I can see why you're angry. As much as your parents are concerned for you, Christianity is not a one-size-fits-all. What do you mean? When you go into a store with your parents, do you all get the same exact clothes? Of course not! You see, Jesus meets you where you're at. He respects you as a person. I just want to make my own decisions instead of what my parents want me to be. Victor, would you hand me that Bible there? Okay. Here, Garrett. Oh, come on. Not you two. You said you want to make your own decisions. The Bible has some good pointers for that. This thing has over a thousand pages in it. Then start with the Gospel of John. There you go again. John 3.16 is what my parents tried to shove down my throat. Well, there's more to it than that verse. This is stupid. I shouldn't have come here in the first place. Garrett, wait. The book of John will get you to know who Jesus is. No guarantees, Bible thumper. Garrett! Let him go, Victor. He isn't ready to listen yet. So what do we do now? We pray for him, Victor. Pray that he will read that Bible and come back to us with some good questions. Hey, kid, kid. What do you want? What are you doing out here, just wandering in the dark? Nothing. You're breaking curfew. Haven't you got a place to live? No. And why not? Why does everybody keep asking me the same question? I have told them a dozen times why I left home. Okay, I I won't press that subject anymore. Thanks. And uh, what's this? Can I see it, please? Where did you get this Bible from? Uh, From a youth center. And no, I didn't steal it. What youth center are you talking about? The Lighthouse Youth Center. Come along with me. We're going to check things out. Excuse me. Yes, officer? 
Uh, this young man was wandering down the street after curfew. Uh, he had a Bible in his hand. Did this Bible come from here by chance? Yes, it did. I gave it to him. Uh, that clears you, young man. <laughs> I, I am concerned about him, though. Uh, maybe you could help him reconnect with his parents. I'll see if I can do that. Uh, I'll continue on then and not bother you any longer. Thank you so much, Officer... Uh, Pete. Pete Jones of Bleakville County. Well, thanks again, Officer Jones. Thanks, officer. Have a seat, Garrett. Garrett, would you call your parents? I'll be here for you if they come here. I'm sure they're pretty worried by now. Okay, I guess so. Here, you can use my phone. Um, Dad? Garrett? Garrett! Where are you? We've been worried sick about you. I'm at the Lighthouse Youth Center. Pastor Rex wants to talk with you. We'll be there soon. Did you reach them? Yeah, they'll be here in a few minutes. Oh, Garrett! Where have you been all this time? Where do you think? Mr. and Mrs. Holdem, I'm Pastor Rex, and this is Victor, one of our kids here at the youth center. Would you sit down, please? Very well. Garrett's been struggling. He does love you, but he's hurting. What can we do about it, Mr. Cox? I gave him a Bible so he can find some answers. We've tried that already, but it hasn't worked. Yeah, you always try to shove it down my throat. Garrett, did you read the book of John in the Bible we gave you? No, I haven't. Why? It's like we said. It has answers to your questions. It could change your life forever. The Bible could definitely set you free from this anger that you have. How could it change my life forever, especially my anger? Do you really think the Bible could help me? Definitely. The story of Jesus, for instance. Is there something special about him? Yes. His life here on Earth 2,000 years ago changed human history forever. He healed many people. He taught them many things about the kingdom of heaven. But one night after Jesus and his disciples ate the Last Supper together, Jesus was arrested in a garden and taken to the most vicious governor in all of Israel. His name was Pontius Pilate. Lord Governor. What is it, Gaius? The Pharisees have brought a troublemaker to us. They state that he is Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth, huh? I've heard many things about this man. Bring him to me. Then I want to get to know him myself. Bring in the prisoner. So, you are Jesus the Nazarene, huh? He also claims to be a king, Your Excellency. A king, you say? Tell me, Jesus, do you claim to be king of the Jews or not? You have answered correctly that I am the king of the Jews, but my kingdom isn't here on earth. If it was, then my followers would fight to prevent me from being arrested. So, where are you from? Do you refuse to reply to me? Do you realize I have the power to either free you or to put you to death? You don't have any power over me unless it was given to you by God himself. Those who handed me over to you are proven guilty of a greater sin. But those who are on the side of the truth listen to what I say. Truth? Truth? What is truth? Quiet! I said quiet! Look, you bring to me a troublemaker who is accused of starting trouble, but I, myself, have examined him very carefully and have not found any wrongdoing in him. So, I will have him whipped and let him go. There's only one man you should consider freeing Pilate. Free Barabbas! Why him? He is a murderer. Kill Jesus yourselves. 
I want no part of his execution. We ourselves cannot execute anyone, so release Barabbas to us. If you let the Nazarene go free, then you are not Caesar's friend any longer. If anyone declares him to be the king of the Jews, they go against the emperor. Very well. Have him whipped, beaten, anything to win this trial, but don't kill him. Yes, sir. Come with me and bring the prisoner with you. Here's a thorny crown to put on his head. <laughs> put this purple cloak around his shoulders. This stick will do for his scepter. We salute you as the king of the Jews. <laughs> Lord Governor, the prisoner is ready for presentation. Bring him out then. Here is your so-called king of the Jews. Kill him! Kill him! Nail him to the cross! Condemn him to death! Silence! Why should I condemn him to death? He is king of the Jews. The only king we have is the emperor himself. I, Pontius Pilate, condemn Jesus the Nazarene to death on a cross, and let Barabbas go free. So Jesus was condemned to death. Jesus was forced through the streets of Jerusalem, carrying a very heavy cross to be crucified on. How could he have carried that cross considering the loss of blood and, and the beating he received? It was so heavy that Jesus fell several times under its weight. Finally, they reached a hill called the Skull. There were two robbers that were sentenced with Jesus that day. They were crucified on either side of him. And it was there that they nailed the Christ and the two robbers to their crosses. As soon as Jesus' cross was lifted up and dropped into a hole in the ground, Jesus spoke from the cross. My Father, forgive those that don't even know what they are doing to me. Let God come down and rescue him from that cross. That way we can see and believe in him. <laughs> he saved others, didn't he? Can't he save himself? <laughs> uh, yes, save yourself if you're so high and mighty. <laughs> uh, uh, you are supposed to be this king, right? Prove it by getting yourself down from that cross and us too while you're at it. Quiet, you. Don't you have any respect for God's son? We deserve to be punished for what we did wrong. But this man didn't commit any crimes. Jesus, keep me in mind when you come into your power as king. I, I promise you that today you will unite with me in paradise. It was then at noon that a darkness came over the entire land. At three o'clock, Jesus spoke again from the cross. Eli! Eli! I'm a Sabachthani! My God! My God! Why have you left me alone? Did, did you hear that? He cries out to God! <laughs> I am thirsty. Brutus, give him some of that wine vinegar. 
Here you are, King. Something to quench your thirst. <laughs> <coughs> my son. <laughs> Mother, here is your son, John, this is your mother. I'll take good care of her, my lord. <laughs> Father, I place my spirit into your hands. It is done! It's true, then. This man was God's only son. So you see, Garrett, what happened that many years ago changed history forever. But what I don't understand is why he died on that cross. Can you please explain that to me? The reason he died on that cross is so that we wouldn't have to face the punishment that we deserve. He took our sins upon himself because of his love for us. Do you see why we teach you these things, Garrett? God loves you and sent his son to take your place. But the story couldn't have ended there, right? No, it doesn't end there. In fact, the next part to the rest of this story ends in a most glorious way. There is a man named Joseph of Arimathea who wanted to bury the body of Jesus. Who was Joseph of Arimathea? Well, he was an important man of the Jewish council in Jerusalem, so he went to Pilate to talk with him. Lord Governor, a man named Joseph of Arimathea would like to speak with you. I know of that man. Send him in, Gaius. Lord Prefect, uh, may I speak with you, please? Proceed. Uh, that man you sentenced to death today, the man you called King of the Jews, well, he is dead now, and if I may, uh, Your Excellency, I, I would like to take the body and place it in my own new tomb. Oh, please do. But do take some of my guards with you, so that his disciples won't take the body during the night. Thank you, Lord Prefect. So Joseph and Nicodemus... The Pharisee, who came to Jesus one night, secretly took Jesus' body and placed it in Joseph's new tomb. Guards are posted there for three days. Say, Septimus, have you ever guided a dead man before? Nope. You? Never. How about you, Basilius? Well, no. This is my first time to guard someone that's dead. Kind of scares me, though, just thinking about it. Well, well, it's a, it's the third day, and, and almost morning. The captain will be here soon to relieve us of our duty. What is that sound? The ground is shaking. It's an earthquake, and it's getting louder and stronger. Something's getting brighter every minute. I, I, I can't see a thing. The tomb! It's opening up! Let's get out of here! Come forth, my son. Thank you. Father! After Jesus came back to life on a Sunday morning, he appeared to many people and told them to spread the good news of salvation to all nations. And then he went back to heaven to be with his Father. I guess I've made a mess of my life. Can you show me how to connect with Christ? Of course we can. I tell you what, kneel right here with us. Now just repeat after me. Father, I realize I'm a sinner. Father, I've realized I am a sinner. Come into my life right now. Come into my life right now. I surrender everything I have to you. I surrender everything I have to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Garrett, your face has changed. <sighs> the anger is gone. Thank you, Lord. And now, a few words of encouragement from Victor and Rex. What happened to Garrett that day can happen to you too, listening audience. I hope the message of the Easter story can change your life forever. And you can pray that same prayer that Victor and I prayed with Garrett. Garrett's life might have been messed up at first, but he decided at the end of the story to change forever with the Lord's help. If you'd like to receive Christ into your life today, 
you can contact a local pastor or call a Christian that you know who has this faith in God and ask him how to receive this free gift of salvation today. Thank you, Rex and Victor, for those inspiring words of hope. Three Nails in a Vacant Crypt was written, directed, and edited by Justin Craig. The part of Jesus was humbly portrayed by Jim Rasmussen. Gaius, the centurion, was played by Matt Hoffland. Pontius Pilate was played by Jake Spry. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mrs. Holdem, was played by Rebecca Hopkins. Also featured in the cast are Glenn Doon as Officer Pete Jones, David Hoffland as Garrett Holdem, Sam Smith as Mr. Holdem, Jack Rieger as Victor, and Brian Rieger as Rex Cox. The Unrepentant Thief was played by Clark Hilty. The Forgiven Thief was played by Jake Anderson. The Roman soldiers and the Pharisees were portrayed by Clark Hilty, Brian Rieger, Jason Denae, Mark Buen, Larry Denhartog, and Jake Anderson. Joseph of Arimathea is played by Clark Hilty. And I am your host, Jeff Berner. Thank you for listening.